Richard Goldberg, he's a senior advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and a former National Security Council official. He testified at this week's House hearing on the UN agency. Welcome, good to have you back. So uh, for viewers who don't know what UNRWA is, why don't you give us a quick summary of how long it's been in business, what its job is, what it does. Yeah, quickly, there's two agencies in the world that claim to handle refugees. There's the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, that's the main refugee agency, 30 million refugees handled by 19,000 staff all around the world, plus the tens of millions internally displaced people as well. And then there's UNRWA, which was set up in 1950 as sort of the political arm of the Arab armies that didn't succeed in driving all the Jews into the sea after Israel declared declaration in 1948. And so they set up these camps and told people, you will return when the Arab armies finally come back to defeat the new state of Israel. Decades and decades go by, generations are born, they all inherit this refugee status and are taught and brought up to believe that one day they will in fact uh, carry out this vision of genocide, returning to what is modern day Israel, kicking the Jews out. And so when you really think about it, what is UNRWA? You look at the anti-Semitism around America right now, the college campuses, these chants of from the river to the sea. Well, UNRWA is the institutionalization of that chant. It's that vision. And so they indoctrinate an entire population to hate, and they collaborate with the terrorist organizations wherever they operate because the UN doesn't recognize them as terrorist organizations. Well, why, what I don't understand is why over time uh, uh, UNRWA was not uh, uh, molded, blended into uh, the UN High Commissioner for, for Refugees. I mean, I'm sure people have thought of that over the years. It makes sense to have one organization. Why hasn't that happened? Well, they could do it right now. In fact, you look at all the crises around the world. Whenever there's a conflict that breaks out and there are refugees, who shows up? It's the High Commissioner for Refugees. They did right. it in Syria. They've done it everywhere. They could do it today in Gaza. They refuse to allow that transition because they're holding on to this mandate, which is not to allow people to leave refugee status. Antithetical what the High Commissioner of Refugees does. They try to move people post-refugee status, get them back on their feet quickly. This is about keeping people in a label of refugees so that you can hold this out over Israel as part of political and eventually military warfare, uh, whether it's terrorism or anything else, to say, these people are going to come back to modern-day Israel. It's never going to happen. The Arab armies of 1948 have moved on. Most of them have peace with Israel now. UNRWA hasn't moved on. And so when we think about why is there a Palestinian-Israeli conflict, why is there something like Hamas, why did October 7th happen, you have to look at, at UNRWA as a key party in, in its complicity. So the, uh, the, the charges, the allegations, uh, evidence against UNRWA participation, uh, some of its members in October 7th, uh, what are the specific allegations and how credible are they? What we understand is that 12 members, uh, employees of UNRWA, participated actually in the massacre on October 7th. 10 percent of the 13,000 employees in Gaza are likely members of Hamas or another terrorist organizations, and then half of all the employees in Gaza have a family member who is a member of a terrorist organization. That's just Gaza, by the way. They also have employees in the West Bank and elsewhere in the Middle East. And so what I think we have to remember is this is a UN agency. The UN doesn't recognize Hamas or Islamic Jihad as terrorist organizations. It's all local hires. It's not an international organization. This is 30,000 employees, all Palestinian. And so if your mission is to raise people to hate, to come up with genocidal thoughts of returning to push the Jews into the sea. All your employees are of the population. You don't check if somebody's a member of a terrorist organization. You're not just complicit, you're collaborating with the terrorists. And so the aid we have provided over many years gets diverted. Uh, the people who are employed to teach people how to hate are members of terrorist organizations. The evidence is now in front of us. We've known this abstractly for years. Now we have faces and names and pictures of acts and hopefully now is the time for Congress and the Administration to Act to finally cut off this horrific organization. The, um, uh, how much money does the U.S. supply UNRWA in a year? And uh, is there an alternative? Tony Blinken says there isn't. Yeah, so from uh, 1950 to 2018, when the Trump administration cut off UNRWA, we had provided about $6 billion. Now, President Biden restarted that funding in January 2021. He's already provided more than a billion dollars. Think about that, $6 billion over 70 years? a billion dollars since 2021. That is a massive expansion of this operation. Now, when Tony Blinken says there's no alternative 
to UNRWA, they're indispensable. Think about the logic of that statement. Hamas right now runs Gaza. Hamas, therefore, runs the health ministry. They run the utilities. It's like saying Hamas is indispensable in Gaza. We have no alternative to Hamas. Obviously, that's ludicrous. You can replace it in a second. When Hamas is gone, we'll replace, uh, hopefully, with a technocratic government that's not a terrorist organization. Right. You can move in an alphabet soup of other agencies to replace UNRWA. All right, Richard Goldberg, thanks so much. Appreciate that expertise. Uh, thanks for coming. Still ahead, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell signals that interest rate cuts could be coming, but maybe not as soon.